oil price falls below $19 per barrel. Nigeria not indebted to IMF, says federal government. Federal government assures of stimulus to immune Nigeria against global recession. FIRS records 15% increase in revenue collection. Plus, Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board recommends indigenous companies to NLNG 427. This is Business Express on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority, the NTA. And we're reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Muplang Dakok. Good to know you're still on to Business Express. The federal government says it is working out a stimulus package that will hedge the country's economy from global recession and position it on the path of positive growth by 2021. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, said this while fielding questions from State House correspondents after the meeting of the Economic Sustainability Committee presided over by Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo. The minister's comments is on the back of prediction by the World Bank and IMF that the global economy will go into recession in 2020 due to the coronavirus pandemic. We are looking at uh, various ways and means to support each sector of the economy, provi providing for each sector clear interventions that will be designed to, with the primary purpose of creating jobs and ensuring that businesses stay afloat during these difficult times. We are working in the next couple of days to finalize our report, to submit the report to His Excellency the, the President. But remember that the President already announced an initial package of 500 billion. So now how that 500 billion will be used and also subsequent interventions which will, will uh, be rolling out when funds from the multilateral institutions come in is what this committee is working on. Meanwhile, the federal government has clarified that Nigeria is not indebted to the International Monetary Fund, IMF, and should not have been among the 25 countries granted debt relief by the global body. The clarification followed insinuation that the country was indebted to the multilateral institution. Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning Zainab Ahmed said Nigeria's application for new IMF financing to the tune of $3.4 million was under consideration and receiving attention. The International Monetary Fund IMF at the 2020 virtual spring meetings projected that Sub-Saharan Africa will witness slow growth up to minus 1.6%. Of that figure, Nigeria as a nation will slide more. Lea Katung Baba Tunde took the session further to seek expert opinion on the year's outlook and how Nigeria will work her way around this new dimension. Earlier this year, the International Monetary Fund IMF projected Nigeria's GDP to grow by 2%. And just like it took the world by storm, coronavirus came, shattering all projections and sending the global economy into a downward trajectory. The minus 1.6% outlook for Sub-Saharan Africa in the recent outlook by the IMF in the medium term will have to be addressed by homegrown economic policies as the coronavirus pandemic will spare no country 
country in the region. And so today we seek to answer the following questions. What do you see as Nigeria's most critical solution to the economic impact of the pandemic as it affects the people and government resources? And number two, how will the current status impart Nigeria on self-sufficiency, especially in the wake of COVID-19 that has forced nations to close borders? Uh, for Nigeria, we feel is really prioritizing uh, revenue mobilization um, so that uh, the government has enough resources that it can devote to building the infrastructure, building the network of universities um, and uh, public education entities that Nigeria so badly needs. Uh, so uh, the focus we feel um, has to be, you know, over the next four or five years to try and uh, put Nigeria in a position where uh, government, federal government has sufficient revenues uh, to address the development spending needs uh, the country has. In the near term, um, you know, of course, really, uh, no, uh, no resource should be spared to be able to um, to uh, put the health crisis, uh, the health threat uh, that Nigeria faces from the COVID-19 pandemic. Identify the criticality of sorting out the workplace. You're going to go back. But what are you going back to? You have to go back to a stringent world health and safety regime implemented at work, which is called occupational health and safety. We, 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 nobody talks about that. Then, of course, you now come back to how do you now uh, face the recovery uh, aspect, which is where do you push resources to? First of all, there are some of the sectors that are really going. I mean, fan, for example, you can let fan fail. You can let fan fail because fan is, is running the only aviation transport system that is holding near you, whether you are in Lagos or in Abuja. You cannot go home anywhere if you don't have aviation. The palliatives for small-scale businesses, for, for businesses in the informal sector, needs to be strengthened to ensure that they stay on the path of keeping people in employment, and sustaining jobs, and also creating jobs post-COVID-19. So there needs to be a whole lot of enlightenment on what the central bank has and how informal businesses can access this. Because so long as they stay in, pro in, 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 in production, then jobs and revenue can be generated. Thank you all for making this show happen. And we're going to keep the conversation going and perhaps we get a, we get a better and, and softer landing before the year ends. And maybe we're just going to end above the 3.4% margin. Thank you, I am Leah Katung Baba Tunde. Thank you, Leah. As the world continues to combat COVID-19 pandemic, some stakeholders have described the use of entrepreneurial skills in the 21st century as the new oil in the world. This is because some entrepreneurs in Nigeria are bringing their skill to bear in the fight against COVID-19 through the manufacturing of face masks, hand sanitizers, and soap, which is today on high demand. Oil coming uh, into the world now. The face mask. Mm. That's the new oil. Face mask and hand sanitizers. Gone are the days that crude oil will be the only foreign exchange and the only earner of a lot of money in the economy. But local content tops the agenda of this administration. Today I proudly, proudly wear a face mask produced by the youth of this country. Like I say, the youth of this country, they are a great resource and not a problem. And I think for this period, we're going to see the youth do more to help our country overcome COVID-19. In addition to the production of uh, soap, sanitizers, and face masks, our company was also involved on the sanitization of uh, their communities and the dangers of the pandemic. The company also fabricated the same machine, which was uh, donated and the Federal Ministry of Trade and Investment has constituted a committee that will track all the challenges associated with lockdown as it affects business in the country. Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, Dr. Sani Guarzo, says the country will be put in track that will boost trade after COVID-19. He says measures have been put in place ensuring that small-scale businesses continue to strive. Long ago, it has started working already, collecting information so that after 
the COVID pandemic, we will come out stronger, not coming out dizzy and looking for where to go. We will come out full of strength, clearly knowing where we want to head and knowing fully what to achieve. And the tasks of that committee, the minister will reiterate, but this is in continuation of the efforts of this committee. We want to be able to predict with clarity where the nation is heading after COVID. And we don't want to come out and start looking for a way out. out. We want to come out and sprint out in, in a nutshell and keep moving and accelerating. Uh, do recovery growth, catch up lost grounds, and also accelerate national development. To speak more on palliatives for small businesses in the wake of coronavirus pandemic is the manager COVID-19 essential community team, the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, BATA, Nderpaya. It's a pleasure to have you on Business Express today. Thank you very much. Okay. So, um, and thank you, viewers. There has been a growing concern for about the fate of small businesses in the country in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, what is being done to keep these small businesses in business after the virus? Thank you very much. As you say, Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment is concerned about the post-COVID. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are putting everything into position so that after it, it will be a springboard. It's an opportunity, actually, that we will be able to lock down. Mm -hmm. Now the whole world has closed its border. Okay. And nothing is coming. That means that we have to call it, look inwards. Okay. And those to be able to build up that capacity is the SMEs. Okay. So the emphasis is on MC SMEs to now be encouraged to come up in full force after COVID uh, lockdown. Mm -hmm. Let them move forward and start. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, palliatives mm -hmm. in. Uh, in line to be provided mm -hmm. for that particular purpose in terms of policy, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, financing, mm -hmm. in terms of guidance. Mm -hmm. We are all working together to make sure, as the Permanent Secretary said, it is a time to start moving forward. Okay, so have you started dishing out those palliati uh, uh, palliatives or you're going to wait till after the lockdown before you start? Nobody can, nobody can reach us now. Everybody is locked up. So that okay. means that it has to be after the lockdown okay. before we can uh, okay. uh, move forward. Okay. Um, so, something that comes to mind is the farmers. In the, Of course, most of the farmers in Nigeria are located in the villages. Uh, I heard somebody talk about it recently, that if Nigeria's... Uh, farming population will come out and really, you know, embrace agriculture that probably will be able to surpass oil revenue after the lockdown. What do you think about that? Fantastic. Mm -hmm. That is true. And that is even the plan of the federal government. Okay. Among the essential commodities that are meant to move, to, uh, to be allowed to move now is agricultural inputs. Okay. Because we can't afford to stop the movement of agricultural inputs and implements. Mm -hmm. That is the reason because agri is the best and is the only springboard that we can move forward. Mm -hmm. We cannot afford to. Mm -hmm. Therefore, agricultural equipments among this, uh, the, uh, the uh, movements, goods, essential commodities that are moving now, mm -hmm. agri equipment is one, okay. apart from food, and pharmaceuticals, agri is next. Okay. So agri is top on the government uh, okay. agenda. Okay. After the COVID, we are going forward. Agriculture is next. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you, what are those commodities that are, you know, or those uh, markets that are allowed to open during this lockdown? And you mentioned uh, agriculture, yeah. uh, pharmaceuticals, and you know, food items. Food items. What other? Um, MSMEs are allowed to operate during this period? All the SMEs that mm. are under this sector, that are under food production, okay. all these SMEs that are under um, pharmaceuticals, okay. medicals, mm -hmm. all the ones that are 
in agriculture mm -hmm. and those that are in packaging because you cannot um, you cannot do production without packaging mm -hmm. so those are the sectors approved by the minister federal minister of industry trade and investment that it should be okay. part of the essential commodities that should be allowed to move during this lockdown period okay. Uh, tell us about uh, the role of your committee. Uh, let me get the name of the committee, the Sustain 2019 mm. COVID-19 Essential Commod Community Sust Team. That's the name of your committee. No, there, there is a mm -hmm. sustainable production and delivery of essential commodities during COVID-19. Wow. Yeah. pandemic a long name there so we call it spec okay spec good yeah, so yeah. tell us what uh, the role of spec is in S this spec. period yes spec is to keep production going on okay despite the lockdown okay secondly to make sure that the safety of the production team is also guaranteed okay keeping the uh, social distance, mm -hmm. putting on using, insisting that the uh, highest health and uh, mm. safety environment is maintained. Mm. And then also make sure that the movement of essential commodities is not obstructed on the road. Mm. Despite, so we, are, we have been working to make sure that goods are facilitated to move freely particularly essential commodities so your hands must be full during this period of lockdown very full okay. very full because of uh, 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 issues of um, roadblocks mm. uh, issues communication has not gone down to uh, uh, to allow these essential commodities to move mm. so everybody is mm. sometimes where the essential commodities are supposed to move in trailer and mm. trucks mm. the small small cars private cars will go and block the road mm. so everybody everything remain so we have been receiving calls from all, all over the country at our emergency operation center mm -hmm. for us to intervene for this custom okay we've seen videos of um would i call them hoodlums or people around you know, trying to hijack some of these trucks that bring in uh, food items. Have you seen any, have you gotten any of such reports? Yes. And what are you doing about it? We have seen the report, but okay. all that we could, uh, we advise mm -hmm. was when you are moving such essential commodities, it should be escorted by security agents. Okay. And uh, we escalated it mm -hmm. uh, to the security agents to take note. And uh, possibly those that are moving should seek for police police escorts okay. that which could be the best alternative but we have seen a lot i think we receive about four incidences in our room mm. of what is happening okay mm. yeah, i wish we had enough time to continue to talk about uh, your role and then uh, micro small and medium enterprises however we are pressed for time thank you very much mbata dirpaya for coming on business express today thank you all it's right. my pleasure all right thank you very much so moving on Oil prices hold at 18-year low on demand concerns amid coronavirus shutdown. Let's see the prices of oil and other commodities on the global market. via telephone from Bonny Island in River State is the Pengerson president, Comrade Michael Nduka. Good afternoon. 
So before we take you, just to establish that you're there, reports reaching us say that about 20 offshore staff of the Exxon Mobil have allegedly been arrested by the River State Government. According to the report, 21 of them are members of the Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, Pengerson, while the remaining staff is the company's chief security officer. So tell us, Mr. Nduka, what, what exactly is the situation over there? In River State. Okay, uh, for some people, um, it's unfortunate that um, we we have to find ourselves in this kind of situation. Uh, like you said uh, yesterday, um, we had about twenty-one of our members. So do you think that uh, that development is going to in any way affect the distribution of oil across the country? Well, at this point, um, we are still looking at government to, to, to take the necessary steps. We have formally uh, made complaints to the government, so we, it is in their court now to, to prove to us that uh, we are still uh, essential workers, even at this time, that uh, everybody has hope because of coronavirus. So at this point, it's perhaps a little premature, but of course we have a responsibility as leaders to ensure that the uh, members are protected. So if it gets to the point where we have to withdraw our members from, from services, we will do that. Okay. We will be very, very comfortable to do that because uh, we don't want a situation where we will further endanger the lives of our members. And okay. What, so what, what would be your immediate move right now? Okay, Mr. Antuka, I was asking you, I said, what will be your next move? As I said, um, just a few minutes ago, we have released press statements, and in that statement, we have demanded the immediate release of these um, members with apologies. And um, we also have said that government should, uh, in a bid to at least even help our people, to also establish um, the um, COVID-19 testing uh, centers, they perhaps what I want of you, because we know that most of our colleagues who go on offshore and platforms, they take off from Port Harcourt and New York vicinity. So if that can happen, the, the, the psychological trauma of having to keep our people uh, uh, for the uh, isolation of quarantine will not arise before going to work. So you ask me what next? And I said, we have been good for our government. much, Mr. Michael Unduka, uh, the 
President of Pengasin, thank you so much for joining us via telephone on NTA today. We will be joining you in our subsequent bulletin for updates. And the equities market closed the week on a positive note. The NSE All Share Index appreciated by 1.63% to close the week at 22,921.59 basis points, while market capitalization stood at 11.945 trillion naira. In terms of deals, 231 million shares were traded in 4,521 deals, and it was valued at 2.610 billion naira. The most sought after stocks were the financial institutions of FBN H, United Bank for Africa, and Guarantee Trust Bank. Stocks in Asia rose in Friday trade as investors await the release of major Chinese economic data expected to be out ahead. Over to Amina Nujem. And this is where we end this episode of the program. My name is Muplang Dakok. Remember to wash your hands regularly and stay safe. Music